What about K-Town Cowboys? I wasn't that. I know. What is that? that fun? Um, that was super fun, and okay. it was it's it was an honest portrayal of like how K Town feels like. I was I was a little girl. I was prepubescent little girl with braces, and I was it was the coolest thing that all the boys that I was in a zombie pick. But as a little girl who had a perm and wore blue eyeliner, and the makeup trailer guy hated me because I would show up with my blue eyeliner. He's like, I'd be a zombie. He's like, could you please not show up with makeup on your face? But I was like a 12 year old. I was a preteen, and like, I couldn't not have my blue eyeliner. Yeah. So anyway, I was mortified because they made me look horrendous. They made me look like a zombie. But yet, I was the coolest chick ever because I was in a zombie movie. But anyway, the stigma stayed with me. I went to the movie theater and I saw it. Stigma stayed with me. I never watched the movie ever again because it was it was like a bad experience for me as a little girl. That being said, all these years later, my husband, I have a copy that still has the saran wrap on. Like I bought the DVD because I was like, I'm in this movie, but I never ever watched it. So my husband, who I met three years ago, says I want to watch it. So we watched it together about a year ago. I was like, this movie is so good. Yeah. This movie is so good. I was so proud. I was so proud of the director. Duh. Yeah. He was the makeup guy on all of Romero's other movies. And it was his first direct, uh, Tom Savini, it was his first directorial debut. And it was amazing. But as an actor, I think you just approach, um, I just think you approach the role. And it's lovely because I do mostly television, it's lovely to have had a full arc, which if anything, it reminds me of theater, which we were just talking about, that you get to play through the whole thing um, and have a you know have a journey with this character. So that's that's more fun than showing up on Awkward and, and just being the mean girl's mean mom for a few bam, episodes bam, bam. and yeah. yeah, kind of, and having some great scenes, but yeah, having a more um, full circle. When we were shooting it, I was always talking to Jack and um, Steve about, um, mm about how important it was to really bring out the fact that they that they love each other. Because if that's not there, and it is just a fake relationship, which is the cliche in this town, the casting couch and getting what you want and yeah. sweeping, then the movie won't hold as much weight. So it was, Agreed. you know, and, and, I, and so we kept really bringing that up a lot in the shooting process and really remembering that because there are elements that he's using me and, and uh, I mean, there are all those elements, but if, if they don't really care about each other in some way, then it's all it's all for naught. And I think in seeing the final result, I was so happy with that. I yeah. bought each step of the relationship, whereas on the page, I saw the challenge of what we had to accomplish, and I was like, oh gosh, I hope we can, so that it does pay off. And when I saw it, I thought it did. It added depth to the film in yeah, that sense. I yeah, I agree, I agree. I'm glad, I'm glad you, um, noticed that <laughs> yeah thank you he happened to be an Asian man that she fell for mm -hmm. and that she was you know an advocate for in Hollywood and he's and understood what he was up against but as a love relationship yeah, I don't know did you in reading it like did you see like I think she's like almost colorblind in that way I never thought of that as a hurdle for her as for her to no. hurt of her right and I did I. I was like did I miss something no, no. <laughs> yeah he was just another attractive dude. Yeah. That was wooing That you. she was drawn to. Yeah. yeah. That she fell for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he was really innocent in his in his approach to whatever he was going after. Mm. I don't I don't think there was anything like underlying that was really heavy being like, oh, I'm gonna sabotage this guy's career and then I'm gonna make it a career of mine. It's just like, oh well, well, you know, you shouldn't every he was like a moment to moment guy and he was just always in, in my interpretation of him just being honest with the situation and always also looking for the benefit of himself and mm -hmm. it always ended up kind of working out in that way and he was just you know kind of happy to be where he was mm -hmm. and whatever his idea of success was it ended up like manifesting in itself in the way that Kelvin would take it repercussions I'll kiss it. your ass a little bit too but this okay. is very genuine I think and it might just be because I'm an actor and and so I watch it sometimes through that view but right from the table read um, the characters stood out, but I think it's because you're good. I think it's because you're a good actor. Oh. And right from the table read, um, you know, you put a lesser actor in that role, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. And that may be part of the reason why the character stands out yeah. is he makes him stand out. That's right. And Bruno. I'll put Bruno in there too, the boss. You know, yeah, he's a great, he's a great actor. Hated him. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. And oh, that's yeah. what's so good about it. And yet you love him. He's an asshole. Right. And yet yeah. you like yet you're like you kinda of love the character. You gotta love exactly. him on screen. You wanted more of him, like, oh here's the asshole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so basically what the two of you have now said then is the director sucks, the story sucks, and it's all because <laughs> you're amazing yeah. acting that the yeah. script came to life. It's really he cast it very well. <laughs> what's he like as a director? I think one of my favorite things about Steven is that he is collaborative and that he goes, what was the expression? It was it was like a year now, a year ago now, but he would always say like after a cut or something, he would say, is it good for you? Is it good for you? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Is that good for you? Yeah. It was like a, a running joke at yeah. that, you know, and, but he means it. He means it. And, and not just, is it good for you? Do you want another take? You know, but really, you know, what did you think? Should we do this again? Very open to, yeah. yeah, open to ideas, directorial ideas or acting ideas or, or what ha what have you. And, and it makes it makes you feel like you are responsible for yourself. Like when when he asks if that's good for you, and it's like, well, I guess that was good for me. Mm -hmm. And then I, for me, it helps me move on to the next thing faster because I'm not judging what I'm like. So, mm -hmm. Okay, that was good for me. And then mm -hmm. so you're not thinking about it again. And mm -hmm. so I don't know if that's a technique that he's using to make sure like we're staying on track and doing the best we can but either way it made me feel really comfortable mm -hmm. to know that he's looking out for our best interest mm -hmm. in terms of what we're creating mm -hmm. and wants us to feel good about it too yeah awkward is coming up for me um, yeah so I'm coming back on awkward I think this month and um, and and heading to Hawaii for this film festival in a couple Ooh. weeks so that I'm thrilled about well it's always sunny next week um, and then I'm doing a play reading at East West Players New play? Um, yeah, it's a new play. Nice. Uh, it was at the Ojai Playwrights Festival oh, as well. Cool. It's called Hannah and the Dread Gazebo by uh, amazing playwright Jaya Park. Um, and that's in two weeks, day after my birthday. And then um, just gearing up for an off-Broadway run of Four Clowns.